Hello everyone, in this module I will basically explain how an IC555 timer works. I will basically discuss about monostable multivibrator. A monostable multivibrator means that if I give one pulse, one pulse is this small pulse. Pulse means I start from VCC, then a small, for a very short time of interval, I give the value from VCC to zero and then back to VCC again. If I do this, then the output that I am expecting is one complete proper wave, square wave. So I will basically explain how this works. A few things before starting with the circuit and its functioning is, this is an RS, uh, SR flip flop. This, these two are comparators, uh, op amp circuits basically. This is the capacitor which will be charged and discharged. One thing to note in an IC555 timer is that it works on the principle of charging and discharging of the capacitor. Next thing is the transistor over here and we will see that how this transistor turns on and off and on the basis of that capacitor gets charged. This is the supply that I am giving and here from Q I am getting the output. This is the buffer basically. Okay, so right now starting with what or uh, what do these resistances stand for? These are those 5k resistors which basically on the basis of potential divider if I am supplying VCC over here if this is a resistor then again a resistor then again a resistor it is divided in 2 is to uh, sorry 1 is to 3 ratio uh, sorry 2 is to 3 ratio so the potential over here will be 2 by 3 times VCC and here again 1 by 3 times VCC these will be constant potentials, will not change throughout the problem. Okay. Next, what do we do is, first of all, how does an SR flip-flop works? An SR flip-flop basically works on two inputs and correspondingly I have two outputs, one is Q and other is denoted by QR, Q bar. The two inputs are S and R. S stands for set, R stands for reset. The truth table is uh, S, R, Q and Q bar. It states that when S is equal to 1 and R is equal to 0, that is initially I have set the output and hence the output is 1 and the complement of the output that is Q bar that is 0. Next, if S is equal to 0 and R is equal to 1, that means that I have reset the output or wait, I'll just explain first. If S turns from 1 to 0 and R still remains 0, that means my uh, circuit will have no change, no change. So whatever was there, it stays. That is, if the output was 1, it stays 1. If the output was 0 initially, it stays uh, 0. So I'll write no change. Okay. Now, if R becomes 1 S and S stays 0, then the output changes or output resets to 0. If it was 0, it stays 0. Otherwise, if it was 1, like here, it turns to 0 and Q bar, that is the complement, becomes 1. Next, uh, fourth case is the indeterminate case in which both are 1 and hence uh, I cannot determine what was what is Q and what is Q bar because both of them become 1 but this case won't come in this problem. Okay, so this is what we will be consulting throughout the working of the circuit. Next thing that comes is what is a comparator and how does it work. Comparator has two inputs, positive and negative, it is an op-amp and correspondingly I will get some output. It basically means that if the two inputs I compare the two inputs, whichever is higher, I correspondingly get that output. This is positive, negative and the output that I get from a comparator is either plus VCC or minus VCC. Plus VCC corresponds to output being 1 and minus VCC corresponds to output being 0. See it like that. Now, uh, how do I compare? Uh, consider that my initial supply voltage to the positive terminal was 9 and to the negative terminal was 10. So that means that the positive potential was less than the negative potential or the negative potential was higher. If the negative potential is higher then the output is minus VCC because negative is higher and hence output is 0. Or if the positive potential consider it 19, if the positive potential is higher than the negative potential that means the output is plus VCC or the output is 1. It works on the similar principles, both of them. This is comparator 1, this is comparator 2 and plus minus. We'll see that. Okay. So, what happens before or just at the beginning of the circuit? 
I have VCC as my trigger and initially uh, wait, I'll just rub this off initially nothing is working this has been set to 0 that is the output has been set to 0 and uh, threshold voltage is less than 2 by 3 VCC this is the initial setup now because the uh, step by step if this has been set to 0 or Q the output is set to 0 then Q bar is 1 and if Q bar is 1 that means this line is activated this transistor gets activated and hence this acts as a short circuit so the capacitor can start to discharge through this line it is important to note that capacitor also has a charging medium over here a resistor over here through which it can supply some uh, voltage but because this is a short circuit it will prefer this path so I have this capacitor discharging path to on when nothing has been started so um, initially Q bar is 1 and hence capacitor starts to discharge so in the initial circuit trigger is VCC this threshold voltage is less than 2 by 3 VCC which we will see and capacitor has no charge now why is this threshold voltage less than 2 by 3 VCC is if this is less than 2 by 3 VCC that means the positive potential is less than 2 by 3 VCC so that means the output is minus VCC or output is 0 and hence reset is 0 initially reset is 0 and similarly trigger trigger is VCC which is greater than 1 by 3 VCC so negative potential is higher so that means output is minus VCC or 0 and hence set is 0 so initially set is 0 R is equal to 0 that means I do not change anything in my circuit now things start as I remove or move my trigger from VCC to 0 what happens is see at one point of time it was VCC so it keeps decreasing it reaches to 1 by 3 VCC and then goes to 0 as it touches 1 by 3 VCC you see at this point when this is 1 by 3 VCC this becomes less than 1 by 3 VCC so the positive potential becomes higher and I will get a plus VCC output or output is equal to 1 output or output of the comparator I mean so output of the comparator becoming 1 means that set becomes 1 set becoming 1 when R is initially 0 so I will write it here R is equal to 0 initially and I made set is equal to 1 set is equal to 1 means Q becomes 1 so my output was initially 0 and it became 1 when trigger was turned from VCC to 0 ok output becomes 1 output becomes 1 we will see one part of it output becomes 1 this becomes 0 Q bar so Q bar becomes 0 that means this is deactivated so capacitor has no option to move through this path and hence it starts to charge through this uh, supplied potential VCC so capacitor starts to charge ok now what happens is this uh, trigger that I am supplying is only for a very short interval of time and because of that what happens is as I turn or come to 0 immediately I have a latch and it turns from 0, zero to VCC again because it turns to 0 to VCC again it becomes or the negative potential becomes greater than 1 by 3 VCC and the output of S becomes 0 again initially it was 1 now it becomes 0 again now R was 0 S again becomes 0 so I am at this condition no change no change means output was 0 initially uh, zero, uh, 0 initially it became 1 and it stays 1 now till how long will it stay 1 that we will see notice that at this point of time we are at the position when capacitor is getting charged through this VCC and what happens is at some point of time the charging of capacitor which is connected to this terminal as well that is the positive part of the first comparator then this potential will at some point of time increase above 2 by 3 VCC as soon as it increases above 2 by 3 VCC this potential that is the positive potential will become more than the negative potential and hence the output will be 1 as soon as the output becomes 1 notice that S was 0 now R is becoming 1 so I will land up at this condition when my output becomes 0 so at that point of time output will become 0 as soon as output becomes 0 notice that this becomes 1 Q bar becomes 1 and hence I will start to activate this uh, um, transistor and then the capacitor will start to discharge through this terminal and finally I will have one complete or just one wave uh, that's it and capacitor will be charged to zero 
the circuit would not proceed further because I do not have additional triggers to give in the circuit. So this is what or how a monostable multivibrator works. Okay, now we'll just uh, do with the plotting of a few graphs which will state that how capacitor was charged and discharged and similarly how did the output behave. So if you see, notice, uh, I'll show the trigger as well. So initially, trigger was at VCC. When trigger was at VCC, I had it. Uh, when trigger was at VCC, I had a capacitor which was at zero, no charge. And I had an output which was at zero. This is capacitor, this is input or trigger. In trigger, capacitor and output. So initially, the output was also at zero. Capacitor was uh, at no charge or because it was discharged completely and the trigger was at VCC. As soon as the trigger becomes to zero, then capacitor starts to charge. It starts to charge from zero. And the output, uh, initially it was zero. Now, as soon as this comes, this becomes one. So the capacitor starts to charge and the output becomes 1. Now, I have supplied this, uh, that is the trigger is done, but what happens is, as soon as the capacitor reaches from its charging to 2 by 3 times VCC, then as soon as that happens, this output becomes 0. At that point of time, the capacitor starts to discharge again and then it stays to zero charge and the output is also zero. So this is the charging of the capacitor and this is the output and this is the trigger. That's it.